in one minute. So we'll be seeing her come up. So, um, you know, if Randy can't join the show, that'd be, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be too good. But still, we will have her on coming up real soon. So, uh, in theory, Alejandro, she'll be contacting me like in a minute. So I don't know if you get to see it on the screen or not, but uh, I'll okay. let you know. Yeah. Great. Just let me know. So you want me to keep going or something? Yeah, or? yeah sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Perform. Yeah. So um, a couple other people we're going to have. We're going to have Cheryl Costa. She writes for uh, Syracuse New Times. She's a, a columnist, a weekly columnist there. But what things she did, um, and have you, did, do you have her on? Lately? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your listeners will know she wrote this book um, called uh, something about UFOs. Uh, I can't remember the name of the book right now. Do you remember the name of the book? It's like UFO uh, National Statistics and Trends, we'll I think up. it's called. Okay, hey, we got our guest. All right. Um, I'll, I'll wrap it up then. Yeah, um, so, yeah, anyways, sorry, I don't have the book uh, right here in front of me, but... No yeah. problem. It's just what's great about what she did is she wrote about all of these areas, uh, UFO sightings throughout the country, and she also pushed it. Like, she went out to the media to, to let people know. So her book got tons and tons of publicity all over the country, which is really exciting. But you can read more about them at ufocongress.com. Great. Thanks so much, Alondra. Thanks for filling in. No problem. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. All right, Selma, how are you? Can you hear me, Selma? Selma, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? <laughs> so much for the sound check that worked before. Oh, she's gone. Okay, um, hopefully she will call back in. And, you know, I had a thought when I was doing this Google Hangout. The reason I did it is because I know, uh, I know Randy's well-versed in it. Um, for some reason, it's not working for him. But also, um, I just thought it would it would work for people that wanted to join in as we go along here. And hopefully, we'll hear back from uh, Selma. She should be back any minute. Um, now my camera's down. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. No, there it is. Okay. Um, so while we're waiting, um, I might as well talk to you since you're right here. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> uh, so what do you think as uh, you've li listened to the show for how long now, would you say? I would say at least three or four years. Oh, that long. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what do you think is like the most interesting case that I've talked about? Oh, I, or some of them anyway. I don't. Uh, I think the um, the Can Canadian case um, where the UFO went underwater. Oh, that's where uh, I went up in Shag Harbor. Shag Harbor. That's yep. a very interesting case uh, for me. Uh, the the one tonight's interesting because there were so many. And of course, you haven't done a show on it. Where you hope you're about you're about to, but there were so many witnesses at that one time. That makes it uh, very interesting. Um, but I like the shows that talk about specific cases a lot more than other kind of shows that yeah about talking about UFO and U the huh. UFO um, subject in general. All right, I think Hi. we have you. We have you. Sorry, how I, are you? I couldn't. Um, I couldn't connect earlier. I'm well, thanks. How are you? Great, thanks so much. Uh, we thought this was going to be. Uh, for a minute there, we thought this was going to be a disaster because, unfortunately, uh, Randy is not able, he's not been able to connect with us. Oh, and oh no. He did, he did, yeah, he did fine in the test. And I could get him through a phone line, but the phone is not going through my computer and into, so no one can hear him, basically. But welcome okay. to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much you. for, uh, it's, it's a real honor actually to have you on um you know this case i consider one of the very uh the very best cases out there with all the witnesses and so i have a number of questions for you but in your own words i'd love to hear directly from a witness like you are you having trouble with your 
phone? I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try and hold it as uh, as steady as I can. It was it was great earlier, but now I'm kind of moving it. So I apologize. Okay, no problem. So can you tell? Um, you know, you probably had everyone had different vantage points when when things were happening in the beginning. Um, I. I heard uh, somewhere there was flashes of light first. Did you see that? Yes. Um, my first sort of um, experience with in the experience itself was was seeing flashing lights um, in the distance. Uh, I don't know if you are very familiar, but the school that I attended was is very rural. So um, used to be a farm. So there's a lot of open space. Mm -hmm. um, and so our playground was essentially just not dirt, but kind of dirt. Um, I don't know if that's how it is now, but that it was a very, very big space of um, of land. And then the boundary of that playground were um, essentially the trunks of trees. And beyond that was bush, very uh, tall grass, um, savanna region, lots of trees lots of copies. Um, it wasn't mountainous per se, but they were, you know, little copies, sort of smaller hills. And that's where uh, the flashes that I saw um, were. Now, did everyone around you like say, hey, what's that? What's going on? And um, did you all start talking to each other? Like what's happening? Um, yeah, I mean, initially what, what it was, was it's kind of, you know, you start to question yourself. It's like, okay, did I see that? And then there were a few of the people who were pointing in the same direction where the flashing lights or the flashes were coming from. And so we all sort of gathered and looked at each other and said, did you see that? And kind of corroborated each other's stories like, yeah, I saw that. What does it look like? It looks like flashing lights. Um, but it, it started off uh, very slowly in that most of us, you know, weren't sure and exactly what we had seen. And so you kind of just like, okay, did I see that? Didn't I see that? Um, but then when a few of us kind of clustered together, uh, we, we, we realized that we were all seeing the same thing. Now, there was one little girl that was interviewed by Dr. Mack that said she heard a sound. And when he asked her what the sound was, she said it was like someone was blowing into a flute. Did you happen to hear any sound? I did not hear any sound. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the the most, I mean, other than the entire thing being almost like an out of body experience, yeah. time was, well, time seemed to be the really um, kind of odd thing that stuck out in that it seemed like it had slowed down immensely. Um, really? I had no yeah. concept of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had no concept of time from the time that I had seen the flashing lights to the time that I saw the being to when I let go of my friend Emma's hand, I do not know how much time went by. It seemed like it was, everything was moving really slowly. Isn't that For interesting? Me. You know, that's what a lot of people say during a car accident, everything like moves really slowly. It seems to. Um, now when uh, there was only, I, I know there was only one adult that was a parent that was in uh, a tuck shop, I guess it was called. Um, yes. <laughs> and, but no, and I don't even know what that is, but. Oh, uh, a, t a tuck shop is like, um, it's what we have on our, on our school premises where you sell uh, candy and fruit and soda. Um, uh, so we don't have cafeterias. We have, we have, unless you go to boarding school, which I did in high school, so you'd have a cafeteria, but the tuck shop is really where you can buy all your treats. So lots yeah. of chocolates and all of that. That's where oh that's where the yeah. only adult was on the playground, yes. Yeah, and was that unusual? You know, I always wonder why there weren't teachers out among the children. Usually you'd in most schools, when they go out to recess or something like that, the children go out um with a, a teacher or two. So was it unusual that there yes. wasn't a teacher? Incredibly. Um and it was only because the teachers were having a staff meeting that particular day. Oh, um what timing? so huh? Yeah. So um, they they were all in their staff meeting and, and break was a little bit longer than usual, which we loved. And, you know, it was a Friday, so that was even better. Um, and us as grade sixes were the, we were the oldest ones on the playground because the grade sevens were taking an exam because we have grade seven exams, end of year exams. And so we were, 
kind of manning the playground and feel I remember certainly feeling like, yeah, you know, we're gonna we're the oldest ones on the playground, as you do, you know, yeah. at recess. Um, but yes, there was one teacher in the tuck shop. I actually completely forgot about that. The tuck shop was located in an area where the younger children played. So the playground was essentially one big one big play area, if you can think of it. But the younger kids from grade one to about grade four had their own section. It wasn't separated, but they just had their own section that had swings and, you know, was kind of just their area that they played in. Wow. Um, okay, so uh, let's continue on to, you saw the flashes and it was over to this area where you were not allowed to go in. I know there were like a, a lot of trees. It was hard to get through. And so was there actually a fence there in front of this area you weren't supposed to go? No, there was no fence. Um, mm -hmm. What it was, was literal tree trunks as the boundary of the playground. So if you can think of big eucalyptus trees, the trunks of those trees were what separated our playground from, you know, where we were not supposed to go beyond. Um, but there was no fence. The rest of that was just open area, open bush. Um, you could see as far as the eye would allow you beyond that. So there was mm -hmm. no obstruction, really, other than those tree trunks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and so let's let's hear the rest. Uh, so did now I know one of the children described that uh, the uh, craft went what appeared to go along like a power line or did you see anything like that? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that, Martin? Yeah. One of the witnesses said that it appeared to go like along. I don't want to say a power line or some type of. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, I I didn't see that, but there was a very there was a a weird like buzz or hum um, that again I couldn't really make too I couldn't make too much sense of because I just didn't know you know sometimes electric lines buzz so but it yeah. was a very very loud buzz and then also given this whole time thing I just wasn't sure if I was imagining it or what was going on, like I didn't really know what to make of it, but I did not see anything particularly near the power line. I now, do know that I, I definitely felt the buzz, a lot of buzz. Yeah. Now, were you and your fellow schoolmates, were you drawn toward this area? I mean, did you all start like flowing down um, toward yes, it did. to see what was going on? We did. Um, we did eventually. <clears throat> and it was right by, you know, the, right by the logs as we would call them and we you know we could sit on these logs sometimes and and eat our lunch which is what we would do but we stood there and kind of just congregated a few of us and looked in the area where both the flashing lights were and wherever this buzzing sound was coming from from the electric poles um and you know if i saw what i called the being or a being um, that was maybe maybe about three to four feet away from me, but it really? didn't cross. It didn't cross over the boundary of of the tree trunks. Never. Really, and now what about yes. the floating? Did you see? Did it appear to be floating? It did to not you? appear to be floating for for me. I saw it as being grounded on on this like copy like area like i keep saying i was able to draw a craft to the best of my um memory but i did not see it floating mm -hmm. what about on top of the craft and did did you think there were actually two beings or was it or one that showed up twice so, that i don't know i think that that's a question that i may never know um but it's but it's definitely a question i've asked myself since the experience because i honestly couldn't tell you if they were to they looked I, they were identical mm -hmm. there was no there was no difference between the two if they were in fact two i have no idea now what about uh, i saw some of the pictures that were drawn and some of them it showed with, or one at least showed with long hair and others, others showed no hair at all. What did you, what do you remember yes. seeing? I remember seeing one that did not have hair. Um, hmm. Mine did not have any, no facial hair, no, I mean, I couldn't tell if there was body hair because it was in a 
the closest thing I can describe it as is being in like a, a scuba diving suit, which I think is what I described it as when I was 11, because that was what I knew. Um, that was like the closest thing I could relate it to. But I have, I don't recall it being, it did not have any hair, no facial hair, no hair in its head, nothing. Almost skin was almost like porcelain, really. Really? And was it like, almost like a, a white color? Yes. Well, like porcelain white? Yeah, like, 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 yes, almost like a, like a nude kind of porcelain kind of color is what I could, is what I could best describe it. I think I said porcelain in that it just looked completely perfect. There was mm. no blemish. There was no nothing. It just was so smooth and it almost looked, um, you know, I think porcelain is just, it's very, it's very firm. It's stiff. It's kind of stoic. Like, so if you were to think of a, a statue, you know, I'll be like, okay, it's kind of like a porcelain statue. Um, huh. Except that this, this being was moving, um, but it was, there was no, you know, the expression on, on its face was not one that I really understood. There was no smile. There was no frown. You know, there were not um, facial, there was no facial recognition for me to comprehend at that time. Did it change at all or did it stay exactly the same? In terms of looks or location? No, as far as uh, ex any expressions. Like you said, the expressions were nothing you recognized. I'm just wondering if any, it, did it show any expressions at all? And looks like, looks like your screen froze. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me, but um, looks like it froze on your end. You may want to... Uh, you may want to sign out and come back to us. And it might start working again on its own. Okay, she'll be back. I'm sure she'll be signing back in. Uh, I think it's really, really interesting so far. And I will, uh, if the time comes in the next hour and people in the chat and listening live would like to uh, would like to join us on Google Hangouts and ask her a question. That is, uh, here she's coming back. Um, Hi, I think sorry, I don't, I don't know. I've got full signal on my end. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're fine. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank so, you. And so basically what I was asking is if it changed any expression at all or did it stay exactly the same like a statue? For, for me, what, what, what I remember is that it stayed exactly the same. It moved from place to place in terms of its location, but its its um, physical appearance did not did not change. Yeah, uh, we have Randy on finally. I don't know what happened, but I think I see him, and uh, hey I'm going to jo join him in. Hey, Randy, Hi, how Randy. are you? Hi, Sama. Hi, Martin. How are you? I'm back. Great. Great. I'm glad you <laughs> glad you made it. Um, so yeah. We've had having a couple of troubles. I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing Google Hangout anymore. Um, <laughs> so uh, Selma has been uh, right into the story. Do you mind if I continue with her and then Randy will talk about sure. the film after? Sure. Okay. So back to you, Selma. Uh, so okay. can you repeat how close you were, how close this thing got to you or you got to it? Sure. Um, I can, I think it was between like three to five feet. Now, how did you feel? I mean, were you scared? I was, I was confused. I was very intrigued. I wasn't sure, but I don't remember feeling fear. No, really? not fear that I wasn't. No, I just think I, I think I, I didn't know what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what I was looking at. So if I felt confused or fearful to that degree, yes, but not to the degree that I thought that this thing was going to harm me. And when it moved, did it move unlike a human? Well, when it moved, I, what I remember is that I would see it over, like over here and then I would blink maybe. I, I mean, again, I don't know about, it seemed like I would blink and it would be over on another side. So I can't really say if it moved like a human because that's, very unhuman like like no human can move that way so the answer to that would be no but i do remember seeing the being in more than one place 
um, in a given period of time, but I don't know what that time frame was. Like I said, I, I have no idea. Uh, Salma, we have an in-house, uh, uh, in-studio guest named Alan, and he has a question for you. Go ahead. Hey, Selma. I, I love Hi, your how are you? I love your accent, accent and your personality. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, did any of the children consider it a, a religious experience, or was it just automatically UFO? I don't know what religion the people at the school were, but did, did, that, did, that, did sure. that ever come up at all? Um, definitely not. I, I mean, I, the school was predominantly, I think most of the people at the school were Christian. Um, and I am Muslim. So there was no, there's no, there's no, um, conversation about that in, in the religion, certainly that I was brought up with, uh, nor the people that I know at, at school. Uh, but there was also no outside influences to what a UFO was. Per se, um, so hmm. I don't know if we knew at that time what we had seen. I don't think we understood fully at eleven what it was we were looking at. We just knew that a few of us had seen something that was very, very unusual, um, in that we hadn't seen it before, in that not everybody saw it, in that we all had different experiences from it. We, we felt different things from it. We saw different things. People got different messages. That's that much we knew was unique and unusual to us. But I don't know if we, I certainly didn't. I can only speak for myself. I don't, I don't believe that any of us classified it as a UFO. We just said, you know, something that we'd never seen before. And one more question. When it was over, is that all you could talk about? I mean, was it just the buzz? That's that's you you couldn't go back to class. I mean, was it yes, was it, that, it took <laughs> was it, a it took a long time. Um, I mean, yes. I it was for a little bit of time, but we also come from a very strict educational system where you don't have time to be messing around. So after all the interviews, and I honestly don't know, Randall would know more about how many we had because there were so many. It was fun at first to be called out of class to, have, you know, <laughs> talk about what I had seen. And even though I didn't fully comprehend what it was, but to have somebody be like, oh, okay, you know, I thought, well, it's good. Okay, at least this person believes me, or at least they're asking me what I saw. So that's good. Um, because, you know, it was very hard to convince adults about what it is we had seen. Um, but then it got, it got a bit tiresome, you know, it got, it got really, it got kind of, tiring at the end and I was happy to not talk about it for a while and I didn't until Randall Randall popped into my life in 2010. Wow um, now what about your your mother w did she believe you right off the bat? Yes she did my mom did oh, um, I I was very I was surprised but but happy like I wasn't I was happy that she was open-minded enough to believe in me like she believed in me and that was mm -hmm. what was the most important and because i took a while to tell my parents but then i thought well well uh oh <laughs> there it goes again uh okay uh randy she Truth. there she's back are you back i'm back you're back okay yeah so it just froze a little bit there um well well that's great now um going back to the encounter itself did you did you actually, do you think you actually make eye contact with this being, whatever it was? Yes, I did. I, I know I did. Um, the, the drawing that I was able to sketch was the exact thing that I saw. And, and I, it was this like, we, we locked eyes. I, again, don't know for how long, but um, I definitely looked at this being dead in the eye. Wow. And um, what did you feel when you did that? I mean, you said you weren't afraid, but was it still just a curiosity at that time? Or did you feel, I know some people feel as though they got a message of some type. Did you have right. any? I, d I did not have a message. I, if I do, I don't know what that message is. It hasn't fully mm -hmm. computed maybe. Um, but I, it was very, it was not calming. I don't quite know how to describe it, but it was like nothing I've ever I've ever felt before. 
there was no fear. It was just almost as though this being was looking into my soul like it knew me, like it knew wow. who I was. That is the best that I can describe um, this sort of like interlocking of, of eyes for however long it was. But I was with my friend Emma at the time. And the moment I walked uh, away from her because I had a younger brother and sister also on the playground because I was worried about them. The moment I walked away from her, I didn't see the being again. And, you know, I, I, I stopped, dropped the gaze and, and walked away and checked on my siblings. And that was my experience. That was sort of the extent of my experience. Now, when you were, when you made eye contact, did you feel there was an intelligence? I don't know if I knew, I would even have known what that was at that time. Um, mm -hmm. to be honest, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I felt, I felt like this thing knew me, knew some things about me, knew some things about a lot of things, if that makes sense. And I think I told that to my mom one time when she asked me like, what do you, you know, what do you think the point of this was? And I said, I don't know. I think, I think I'm supposed to know some, I think that these things came because they know a lot of things about the earth and they're trying to tell us some things. They know some things, but I don't know what those things are. And at 11, you know, I, I remember her looking at me like, okay, that's it's quite existential. But I mean, I didn't know what that was. I had no idea. And I think that that's something I'm still discovering. I don't uh -huh. believe I have any one answer. Um, yeah. It's something that unravels with each day, with each year. The more that I talk about it, the more clarity I get. So I have Randall to thank for that because I didn't for a very, very long time. Yes. Yeah. I, I totally get that. Um, I've talked to people like Travis Walton. I'm sure you've heard his name yes. before. Yes. And there was a long time. Him, yeah. Oh, there was a long time. He just didn't even want to deal with it or talk about it or think about yes. it. Um, yes. You know, one of the girls that uh, Dr. Mack interviewed, um, every time I see that clip, I get goosebumps. And that is... Um, she says they he asked what do you think they wanted or i'm not sure exactly what his question was but she looks back at him and like they were interested she says <laughs> like they were interested and that, for some yeah. reason that just gives me goosebumps like again it's almost like she's describing them looking into her her yes yeah. yes absolutely it was it was very it was very unique you know you mentioned the um the you pose the analogy of like the when you have a car accident time slows down well i didn't have a car accident but i was hit by a by a truck um a number of years like four years prior to this experience and that's how it felt for me so um that's kind of just crazy that you mentioned that and that's not really something a lot of people know about me i don't know if the two are interrelated i have no idea they maybe are not but um it's i've always felt that it's it's something that I can add to the experience of who I am. And there's a reason why I experienced both those things. Yeah. Whether yeah, they're related I, or not. I, I do want to talk to you how your life has been going and all that, but a, a couple of things okay. first. Um, and that is, uh, how do you feel when people are trying to like debunk the whole thing? Or, or first of all, I want to ask you in the beginning, right after this happened, did anyone okay. try to talk you out of what you saw? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, almost everybody. Really? My parents didn't. Uh, yeah, my parents didn't. And of course, people who interviewed us, there were very few people that I actually felt comfortable enough with who I, there were few people that I felt actually were genuinely interested in what, I, in what we had experienced rather than just having a news story, if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. even at 11, you can tell like people who are just like there to just talk to you and, okay, what did you see? Sort of going through the general questions. What did you see? What did you hear? You know, there were, there were some people who were a lot more in depth, like Dr. Mack um, and, a, and a few other people. I think there was an interview, a journalist from BBC who, who, was, who was different too, just in, his, in the approach. Um, and I, so I didn't always feel that people really, even journalists and professionals or quote experts at the time, um, really believed in what we had seen. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people who, who tried to debunk that. Um, 
a lot. So that that had a lot to do with why I just didn't talk about it. Does it upset you now? Because I know there's if you I've I've done a little research ahead of this show, and there are people out there, of course, calling it a hoax and like, you know, yes. and I laugh at that because, you know, I can't imagine school children putting together such an elaborate hoax. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And sc school children, Martin, in a Southern African country with no internet, very few people having cable, have no outside or very little, not no, but very limited access to outside influence about what UFOs are or could be or whatever. Like, yeah, we, we had nothing else to do but come up with this hoax. These you know, 11 year old children um, yeah. in Zimbabwe coming up with this. I'm like, no, I, it doesn't upset me. It used to, but mm -hmm. I think that as I've gotten older, I have realized that there's obviously a reason why Randall found me so, so, so many years later. He literally did like track me down in Chicago, took some time for me to actually believe him and, 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 and like respond to him because I thought, it was a joke, but connecting, recon like connecting with him means that I've been able to reconnect with my experience. And so with that comes a whole bunch of, of other things of understanding of what that experience could mean. Um, and I don't pretend to have an answer now, nor will I tomorrow, but I think over the course of my life, I absolutely will. Um, it also has encouraged me to speak out about what I have seen because I believe in what I saw. And I thought, well, suppressing it indicates that I don't believe in what I saw, regardless of what everybody else thinks or may think. Wow, that's really so, interesting. Um, and you know, and, I gotta say something if I can jump in real quick. Is, yeah, go ahead, Randy. Yeah, I mean, th this is not just a few people. And, uh, you know, there were, there were many witnesses outside this, the school that were adults that had their own experience with uh, either this, cra mostly with this craft, but there was a person after, the day after Ariel. I mean, there's a lot more than, uh, there's a lot of other facts that have come forward over the long time that I've been making this film that give a lot of validity to all the children's testimony. Randy, wasn't there a lot of sightings in the area after that? I don't know about before that, but after that. There, there were, on. Uh, on the day before, the night before, the morning of the aerial event on a farm near the aerial school, uh, and the day after, uh, on that Saturday, it was in the evening. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's just a lot. There was a, a pilot that was flying at, uh, three pilots actually, that were flying at 25,000 feet the night before. Uh, they actually had all seen this thing fly by, and they couldn't explain it. It... Um, it disturbed them enough to uh, get back to Johannesburg Airport where they were flying from Botswana. So they are passing the Zimbabwean border uh, when they saw this. And uh, enough to ask the radar controller, did you see anything on radar? Because this thing had apparently appeared on their left-hand wing, flew across the, there right directly in front of them, and crossed the entire horizon in four seconds, which is unheard of. Hmm. Um, and, you know, these guys see meteorites and, that, you know, uh, satellite reentries and that all the time. And they actually had it on radar for a few seconds at, at in Johannesburg Airport. Anyway, this is just one of many, many other uh, things that give validity to uh, Salma and many others yeah. that were there that day. Thank you. Randy, I'm going to be talking to you in a little bit sure. um, about how you put this film together and all that. But thanks for, and anytime you want to jump in, that's great. Anytime okay. you want to jump into the comment. Okay. I was wondering if the pilots described the the. Go ahead. If the if the pilots described the object the same as the children did. They described it as a ball of light. That's exact. That's all he could say. It was a ball of light. That it. He actually. They all thought it was another plane. There were two planes in the air at the time, and they thought it was the plane that was coming to formate. These were two commercial airlines, and they were. You know, in Africa, you can actually fly in formation and you can get away with it. Um, but they had mistaken you can. <laughs> a lot of things happen in Africa. So uh, he had thought it was on his right-hand side. The pilot said, no, I'm on your left-hand side. And he said, well, what's that on my right-hand side? And, and they both, all three of them, the, the two pilots in one plane and the one in the other all saw this ball. And that's how they describe it. It was a ball of light. And they were looking at it for a while. And, they, and then it crossed it right in front of them. And uh, 
the speed just was incredible. At that speed, when you're at 25,000 feet, you have a much bigger horizon. It's a much larger distance across the planet. Um, so to disappear like that within four seconds was highly unusual for them. I guess anything going that fast turns into a ball of light. Right. Probably. <laughs> well, Randy, um, didn't, didn't some of the kids say that they saw a ball of light and it turned into the disc? Or am I getting that wrong? Uh, several of the kids said that they saw a flash of light in the sky. Yeah, okay. And before all this stuff happened, there was a lot that happened, you know, there was a lot that happened beforehand um, that people, that several of the children had seen in the sky. Um, okay. Some say it was a flash of light. Some have, had actually seen the silver thing. And then, but there was a flash of light involved. That I do know. Everybody, a lot of people at least had reported that. Yeah. Um, and then it was, uh, the next thing that happened was it was on the ground or hovering yeah. above the ground. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Selma. So, uh, in the chat room, we had a question, someone, uh, you have described the being or beings, whichever they were, but what about the craft itself? Can you describe that? Um, or did you even pay like attention to that, uh, with the being being there? <laughs> the being was what I remember most, if yeah. I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. um, the craft, I, I do remember drawing a craft, so I, I, I remember seeing some part of it. I don't even know the extent of what I saw in terms of size. Um, but I would say maybe like a, like a, it was silver-esque in color, um, mm -hmm. maybe sort of like disc-shaped-ish. Um, but it was it was a a type of um, metal or fabrication that I I'd never seen before, and my dad is a steel fabricator, so I was, I can say that's steel, that's you know, that's aluminium or whatever. But I had never seen anything like that before, so I have no idea what it was. It was it was completely unusual, and I say silver esque because it wasn't quite silver, but it was the, it's the closest thing I could I could link it to. Do you remember any type of seams or anything like that? Or was it, did it look smooth? I mean, do you, is there any other detail about it that you remember? And also, some of the kids thought it was floating a little bit off the ground. Did you happen to notice that as well? I didn't notice it floating. Um, I did notice it. And I noticed mm -hmm. flashing lights at first. Um, I think there were some, there were some very interesting maybe patterns, I don't know if they were seams per se, but they were patterns, um, and I don't really know how to describe them, but they were a lot darker than the color of the, of the craft itself. Um, mm. But they were like some form of patterns on, on like the, the top half of the craft, if that makes sense. Wow, that's really, really fascinating. Now, how were your fellow schoolmates? Did anyone like absolutely lose it, or was everyone maintaining calmness through this whole thing decorum no people people started crying um oh, wow. uh -huh. after a while because panic you know if you think of like you see it, so few people gather in a in an area it's not so much of a big deal then more people come then more people come and then everybody's confused by what they're looking at because we don't understand what we're looking at and then one person started crying and then it just took off from there and I think that's when I let go of Emma's hand and went to check on my brother and sister because I was like oh no I'm not having them in a panic but incidentally that entire half of the playground where the grade one through grade fours were nobody had any experience on that half of the playground they were playing like nothing had happened it was almost as though we were in two separate worlds like wow. we were looking at each other in a mirror like just ex same day same time, just experiencing completely different things. And the experience was happening all on this end and nothing was happening on this end. Um, because my brother and sister were looking at me like, what are you talking about? We're fine. There was nobody crying on that end. And, and yet in the big kids playground, panic had ensued. And that's when somebody went to call the teachers from the, from the staff meeting. Yeah. I know you said that time moved very, very slowly for you, but would you be able to guess about how long this whole thing may have taken place after you talked to other people? No, not a clue. <laughs> Could have wow. been a blink of an eye, honestly, because we've, we've spoken about it, um, a few of us, 
over the course of the you know the last couple of years to try and figure out this time thing and a lot of us didn't even really realize there was this time thing that had happened to all of us until we started talking about it and you're like oh my gosh yes I remember that and do you remember like did you get this feeling and it's like yes so how much time do you think it was I have no clue honestly I could not tell you it could have been a blink it could have been 20 minutes it could have been 30 minutes I don't know break was still going on so yeah (laughs) it was still during the break (laughs) Now, as far as you know, were any of the children at all in denial of the whole thing? Um, I mean, not that I know of. I think there there may be some people who chose not to talk about it, um, Mm -hmm. of course, who maybe did see something similar, something more. I have no idea. Um, Most of the people, there are also a lot of people on the playground who did not see anything. You know, who, who were who were in our year and who were in the exact same part of the playground who did not see anything. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I think, you yeah. know, there's also, uh, that's true. Um, and also, there's a, the great ones and twos were never interviewed. Uh, and they were never yeah. taken into account as far as what they had seen. Um, and I just wanted to throw that in there that there were the great, there were several uh grade ones and twos who were never interviewed that I have interviewed that that witnessed that that day. That um so you know they all they talk about this number of being sixty children or I th- personally think it was a lot more than that. Um mm-hmm. uh because of the grade ones and twos that were not uh were not uh didn't do drawings, they didn't do uh personal interviews at that time with them because the school wanted to protect them. Uh and that came from the headmaster himself. Um, but yeah, it is odd that there were some people uh, that did not see anything at all uh, that were there, um, and, it, and it did it did also uh, seem to rely on where they were, you know, their position on the field. Uh, yes. I think everybody at the edge of the playground. I think everybody, most everybody, saw that. Um, but uh, and they, you know, everybody saw it from their own perspective, you know. Mm-hmm. Certain thing, certain people saw it from uh, saw different things because of the position they were in. Anyway, I just yeah. wanted to say that. That's, yeah, uh, thank you, Rain. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Selma, um, there was a question that came in the chat room. Uh, do you talk with any students as adults about the incident? Now, you kind of mentioned that you kind of put this away for a while, but now that it's come back into your life. Have you been able to engage with fellow students now about this? Yes, um, three in particular. Um, we spoke. We first spoke and saw each other for the first time since since the incident uh, in 2013 or something. And so since then, we've been able to we've been able to to talk. I think a lot more about our own experiences and and how our experiences have shaped us but it took a long time and and i wouldn't say i talked to everyone who has had this experience because i'm not really i mean everybody has their own lives but there are there are three at least three whom i do i do connect with that's great um now uh randy and you have both just talked about different perspectives and some people not seeing it how about the recounting of this you know uh, a lot of times I talk about memory is infallible and, you know, sometimes people remember things totally different than it really happened. Do you see uh, mostly consistencies? Uh, well, let's say, let's go all the way back to when it happened. Did people see basically the same thing? I mentioned earlier that, you know, one kid said it had long hair and you didn't see any hair. So were there were there inconsistencies and did, did the deniers or the, the people that were trying to debunk it did they focus on that and say, "Hey, look, you know, this is, this is." Uh, uh, did you have to deal with any of that? Not really. I mean, you know, the 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 thing that struck me the most was that uh, over time, um, these children were interviewed over and over and over and over again, um, and the what struck me was that the the story was the same. The basic outline of the story was the same. Um, the description of the craft, the description of the being. Um, it, 
I, you know, I don't, I've not really met or talked with any debunkers that know enough about the story to even have a conversation with, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, memory is infallible. Um, and Cynthia Hind, who covered this story uh, in, uh, or fallible, is that the right word? Uh, well, maybe that's what, maybe I said it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, it is fallible. And because when somebody's in a car accident, you have, everybody saw the same thing, but people see different things about what yeah. happened and their accounts are different. Um, and the, Cynthia Hind, who originally investigated this uh, for MUFON, she said that's what really convinced her the most about the witness testimony was their testimony was not all the same. She said if this was a fabricated story or or something like that, the story would be the same. But every every child that was interviewed or the adult that was interviewed in the morning, they all had their own experience of the story, you know, that... Uh, uh, it, it was unique to them, you know, and I think that's yeah. also, you know, kind of what I'm concentrating on this film is to, um, this is a people story, you know, these people that, real people, credible, solid people who witness something extraordinary. And, uh, you know, why can't we have these conversations about this, these incidents, these types of incidents, because they do happen. And, uh, I think we need to, we need to learn, uh, try to learn something from them. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, so, I want to ask Salma, what has you talked earlier about how you think the accident you were in prior to this, and also this has shaped your life? Can you talk about how this incident in particular, how it has shaped your life differently than it may have been if it didn't happen? Sure. Um, I mean, I think I'm continuing to learn how it's shaping my life. That's that's a, a constant um, learning curve and will be. But I I think that it definitely opened up my mind to the fact that there was more than just us out there mm -hmm. because whatever I had seen was not of this place. It was nothing that I could connect my 11-year-old mind too. Um, so it definitely opened up my mind in that sense that I, I just became, I feel, um, I think I became very open-minded hmm. because I never doubted what I saw. I didn't, I may not have understood it, but I never doubted it. And I knew that there was a reason that I had seen what I had seen. And so I definitely, I mean, how, how close-minded can you be at 11? But it, it forced me, I think it's definitely shaped a lot of things that have happened that happen. I, I always try and keep an open an open mind about it and, and I know that anything is possible and there's definitely more than just us out there. Wow. Yeah. So it's giving you you know, there's a lot of people that um, think there's gonna be panic in the world if the story gets out there that there's someone and I, I don't think so. I think a lot of people may kind of handle it the way you have. And basically that is you know, we're not alone. I mean, there's a quote out there saying um, either we're totally alone or there's life out there. Either way is very scary. <laughs> yeah, right. Like well, and I mean, in, in terms of like chaos, we we live in that already, really. Yeah. So it's yeah. all about perspective and how and how we can use this incident to connect to other people's incidences of, of these experiences or similar experiences or incidences that are happening more recently or have happened more recently and understand that there's obviously a pattern here for something that we need to pay attention to. Not in a scary way, but in a way that we, in a way of understanding. And I think that that's for us to create, this, this film is something that helps create the discourse on what that might look like. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think that's important because uh, thank you for saying that, uh, Salma. Yeah, I think that's uh, we need to have a conversation about this and in, 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 not, in the our families, open media, and I I kind of think I know what you're saying, Martin, about the uh, panic. People talk about that. Um, I just I really have a feeling that something like this um, will bring us together in a way that we've never seen before. 
um, because we're, you know, we get in our, our spats about our different races and our different religions, but we're talking about something else from somewhere else that may have evolved somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, but I, th I think the potential for a, a complete uh, change in a, in a really um, a good way for humanity is possible through disclosure of this. Um, you know, and I got to say, like, I think anybody that starts researching this, and this was a film, uh, you do your research making a film and you start to learn about what this phenomenon is about and you learn about all these other cases around the world and it really... I, I just want to just say that, like, you know, you don't really understand how rampant or widespread this phenomena is until you really look into it. And it's not at the UFO conferences or things like that. It's, it's, it's from real people. Um, and you hear their stories and, uh, and, and how much it's affected them and uh, changed their lives. And I just feel we need to... Um, and that's what this film is, is aimed to do. It's like, let's talk about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's good. Um, Salma, there is someone in the message room that wanted to know, do you think it had any type of impact on your dreams or intuitive abilities? Yes, I wow. do, actually. Um, I mean, I understand that it did now. I don't think that I did for a number of years. It took, it took me a while. Um, I... I, I am somebody who I, I like to help people. I like to, to be there for anyone other than myself, really, which is not always the healthiest. But anybody that is not fully represented, which is what I feel that experience was, it was like, I don't know what you are, so I don't understand who you are. Um, so I'm going to work toward understanding more. And that's what, that's what I've, I, I strive to do that on a daily basis. My education has been in, um, you know, human rights, in international uh, relations, and how we can work together and figuring out how working together helps people. So I definitely think that it's helped with that. In terms of my intuition, yes, I think so as well in, in varying degrees mm -hmm. for many things. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now, when this happened, how long would you say it was before people started talking about the possibility of being visited by an extraterrestrial as the answer to what you had no idea of? What mm, happened? I think, I think it was probably, gosh, I don't know. It may have even been the first interview, which I don't remember who it was. I think the first interview was either SABC. It wasn't ZBC. ZBC was not the first. That's true crew that came. I, re I remember that. I think the first crew may have been SABC or BBC, to be honest. Yeah, it was um, BBC. It, it was because BBC. I have, it was BBC, right? Because yeah. I, I remember I have, I had an aunt that lived there and she saw me on the, on the news or wherever it was broadcast. And she called my mom and said, um, what's going on? And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh gosh, yeah, I guess I should probably tell my parents about this. And that's when I told, <laughs> that's when I told them. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting that the, our own local crew was not the first ones on, on site. Yeah, I can, I can speak to a little bit about that. It, it was brought up initially as a, by some of the kids that it was, you know, uh, some kind of alien or so, something that wasn't mm -hmm. of this world. But uh, the BBC, when they got there, uh, they were very skeptical and saying, are you sure you didn't see a helicopter, or a yeah. Air Force jet? I mean... He went through, the, the reporter just kept asking over and over, you sure it wasn't a, a, a black Zimbabwean that you saw? I mean, it, it was nice. very, yeah. <laughs> so, so they had a rough, they, they, really, they, they had to fight for this. They had to fight in a way, the, all, the, mm -hmm. all the kids, uh, in a way that I don't think people understand yet, but uh, to be believed because mm -hmm. there was a lot of people around them, including the teachers and the staff initially, that uh, just didn't believe them, you know, but it, except for a, a few that really knew the kids uh, and knew that they would not come running into a staff meeting in a panic uh, telling them about this thing they saw. They just knew that they had, they had seen something that really disturbed them. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, I got to hand it to them. They have really, as a group, 
um, stuck together and uh, demanded to be believed. Yeah. And you don't do that for a made-up story. You don't do that for a hoax. You don't do that for a made-up story. We certainly don't do that for a lie, for something you don't believe in. And and th th thank you for reminding me of that, Randall, because, you know, it's been so long. We were interviewed by so many people. I don't remember who all of them were, but that was definitely one of the crew where that I was referring to earlier, Martin, in the sense that, you know, some of the naysayers that I felt like they were just there to do a job. They were not interested um, in really what we had to say, nor really believed us. Because I think if you're grilling an 11 year old or 11 year olds and younger to that degree, I mean, goodness. <laughs> right, how, how long would you say, uh, I know the time thing you were talking about, but did the uh, teachers actually go outside and try to see what everyone was seeing? Was there ever that point or, was, or had it vanished? Let me see if I, if I remember this. It took a while for the teachers to come out, by the way. They did mm -hmm. not come out immediately, is my recollection. That's they, true. They took, they took some time um, to, come, to come out, whether they were finishing up what they were doing or they just thought, oh, you know, these kids are overreacting. I don't know. But I think it took one teacher or some teachers maybe like stepping out to see what was going on on the playground. Um, and then they saw that, you know, panic, that people were crying. It was just not a normal day on the playground. Um, I don't know exactly how long it took, maybe 10 minutes for them to come, maybe 15. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. I know they did not come out immediately because the people yep. that went to call them went, called them, told them, came back to the playground and said, we told them, but they don't believe us. Oh. Yeah, that's wow. true. I could verify that. And uh, two teachers, uh, a grade three teacher uh, and the Shona teacher were the two teachers that came out, were the first to come out. And then Mr. Vernon came out uh, a little later. So that's the, the benefit of having all the archival and having interviewed <laughs> a lot of people to find out all the little details, which I can't wait to share. I've told some of this before, you know, to share with the kid, with the people that were there, like all the details, you know, like how it went down. Yeah. And because uh, I think it'll be valuable for their own understanding and healing or how, you know, it's I would if something like that happened to me in that way, I would want to know as much as possible and i can't wait to uh really you know give give them that information um in the chat room uh michael wanted to know what would you say if someone said that these beings were from another dimension has anybody ever brought that up to you what would what would i say yeah what would um, you say to that yeah i would say maybe i know they're not from here so they're yeah. definitely from somewhere else you know where yeah. that is i i don't know um, but I think that that's a good way to start a conversation yeah, and, yeah. you know, and, start a dialogue and, about, about that. So, and, and that was a, in my opinion, that was a perfect answer. Um, and also <laughs> in the chat room, someone wanted to know, uh, you talked earlier about, it was a Christian school mostly, right? Uh, um, yes. Did that yes. apparently affect your religion or anyone that you know, like to all of a sudden think there was extraterrestrial? Not that I know of. I can only speak for myself. And um, I mean, when we left, when we leave primary school, you're 12. So I don't know if you've fully formed what you think yet at all. I highly doubt it. Um, but for me, it did not. I think it, I mean, it, it didn't really correlate with anything I'd been taught. But I wouldn't say it necessarily went against it entirely. Um, but I also have my own sense and my own mind to deconstruct what that means to me and what my upbringing means to me mm -hmm. and find a median in between. I don't think that, you know, one determines the other. I think they're completely separate. Okay, so in the, in the years of, let's say, suppression or the years that you didn't want to think about it, did you sure. have, like, certain triggers, like something, like, all of a sudden you'd see... Um, you know, a movie coming out about extraterrestrials or something like that. Did you have some things that would like bring you back to the reality of, of what happened? Yes. There were always people asking me at school. Really? Um, when oh. I went to high, yes. When I went to high school, there were, there were maybe three people from my primary school, three or four people from my primary school who, who were in the same grade as me when we moved to high school. 
and we went to the same high school together. So that story definitely spread. Also, you know, um, you you don't all go to the same high school, so people kind of ask what primary school you went to, and people would be like, oh, Ariel, that's where you know that's where you saw the UFOs, and then then it would be like, wait, weren't you on TV? Um, or they'd ask, did you see did you see the UFOs, or was you know what did you see? Uh, so they were they were reminders over the courses of the years. Yeah, did you quite a, a few? Lot, <laughs> a lot of times, uh, did you always answer honestly, or did you say you didn't want to talk about it? I always answered honestly. If somebody asked me what I saw, I would tell them. If they mm -hmm. asked me if I saw UFOs, I would say, well, I saw something not from here. If they wanted to have a conversation about how I hadn't seen what I, what I had seen, I would just end the conversation and walk away because I had no capacity for that. Like I was not going to have my own experience diminished by someone else's inability to even have an open mind to try to understand what I what my experience was while well well like wrapping it under some falsification of the fact that they cared because they really didn't i i have to tell you this because i'm kind of getting a little chuckle out of it and that is i have someone in the chat room who's uh he's very well let's just say he's not really generous with my guests um okay he, he usually finds fault with them <laughs> he's gonna laugh when he hears me say that but here is his phrase. This lady is one of the most intelligent and credible witnesses I've heard. Oh my, thank you. Yeah. So I had, you. To, I had to say that because this is probably one of the only nice things he said. He said. <laughs> I'm going to give him a hard time <laughs> I am, about I am that. very honored for, for me to have uh, been a recipient of a, nice, of a nice thing that he said. Thank you. I, yes. I genuinely appreciate anybody who, who is interested um, you know, I've never asked anybody to believe in what I believe I saw. I just ask for a conversation about it and to not discredit it and shut it down immediately. And so, you know, I think that there's a lot more space to do that now than, they, than there was in 1994. Um, we also live in, a, I live in a different country um, to where I did before. That was very, very suppressed at that time. I don't know what it's like now. Randall has been back to my homeland more recently than I have, so he can he can speak to that. But I think that we are in, um, we're, we're, we've kind of taken a turn, I think, it's safe to say, where we have the the room to have these conversations. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very, very appreciative of that. Yeah, and I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the science is opening this, these conversations up because they're, I, I believe, uh, you're right on there, Samo. Just, you know, that we weren't talking about other planets 10 years ago, knowing that other planets that could possibly support life out there are out there. And we know that now. So, I mean, I think science is, I mean, we might want to start looking at, well, yeah, maybe microbial life and all that, but what if, you know, what if, and if that what if is uh, real, how is it going to manifest in our world? And has it done that already? And we just have we missed it. Science has science missed it. That's that's a possibility. I think that's why the conversation is going to keep opening, and events like this uh, are important. And uh, you know, there's uh, this event in particular has a, an enormous amount of credible people um, who uh, witnessed a, a single event. Um, yes. yes. So it's important. Yeah. Um, like I said in the beginning, I I do think this is one of the most important cases and i was really excited that i was going to be talking to you um thank you Martin. Th this sounds like it i'm wrapping it up and it's not but it, it's a question that I, I just don't want to forget to ask where do you hope that this film the aerial phenomena uh will bring this what do you hope that will change or help in this whole situation is that a question for me or oh, yes. No, well, oh, I, I, I'll ask him as well, but no, for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, so I think, sorry, um, Martin, it's been a long day. I think that my hope is that this, this film will open people's minds to at least having the conversation about the fact that these things could exist. There's other life out there. I think that showcasing children 
um, who had very limited, very, like no outside influence at all on what this experience could have been, but were still brave enough to speak up about it, should attest to the fact that we're telling the truth and what we saw was real and genuine. And that there are other people out there who have experienced and will continue to experience um, things like this and that we should be talking about it and understanding what it means as opposed to just not talking about it and worrying about who will believe us and who won't. That's my hope of what this film would bring. I don't know, I've seen very small snippets of it, so I don't know what it all entails. Like I, I know Randall is a magic worker, so it's gonna be a lot more than that. But for me, my takeaway in what I think and my hope was that I brought to the film um, was that, that I could simply tell my story tell my truth and we could have a conversation about it. Yeah, I love it. That's really good. Uh, so, yeah. well, I might as well ask you that question too, Randy. Again, I'm well, not wrapping it up. We still have yeah. you know, uh, 20 some odd min minutes left here. No, I, 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 it's an important question because uh, I'm trying, in this film, I'm trying to address it not as a uh, woo woo factor, you know, special effects kind of thing about you know, UFOs and aliens. I'm trying to, uh, this film is about people. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different events that people go through uh, that they don't, they don't get to be heard. Uh, and this is one of them. And it's, it's very similar to other events that happen to people in the world where they, they um, either are ridiculed and not accepted. Um, and this particular one is very, I think, very important. Um, and also that, um, uh, the, you know, the tagline to our, our, our the film is what, what, uh, what do you do when you experience something so extraordinary and no one believes you? I mean, what do you do? And most people, and John Mack talked about this and many other people have, but uh, a lot of these people go inside and they don't talk about it. They stay silent. And I can't tell you how many people I've met that even outside of this particular incident, uh, you know, who just don't talk about it. They've had an extraordinary experience and uh, they don't tell their own family. They don't tell their spouses. They, it's just incredible. The links they will go not to talk about it because of fear of not being accepted. Uh, so I hope my biggest hope is that, that, that this film helps to change that. Um, so it can just be like adults and just like discuss it. And um, that's my biggest hope. Well, that's great. So Randy, along those lines, have you reached out to some of the witnesses and they just don't want to talk about it? Yes. And uh, what would you say a percentage? I mean, is there a percentage of people? Um, I would say uh, you know, I would say, I'm trying to add that and do the math here. I would say a good 40%. Wow. Yeah. And then, you, and, and there's a lot of people also that I just couldn't get to that I, that were willing to be interviewed, but they were all over the world in Germany and New Zealand. And, um, but I spoke to quite a few of them, but there's also a lot of people that witnessed this that, uh, that I spoke with but we're not willing to be on camera. They were afraid. Um, and there were just, there's a lot of witnesses that I know exist that I never found that. I mean, I was just, I was impressed by the amount of witnesses that weren't even at the aerial school that witnessed this uh, event happening in, in the surrounding time. Uh, that I, I, I knew there was some talk of a meteorite entry or satellite and I, I really went into that. That was several days before, but these, these other witnesses, uh, were around that, you know, the day before the morning, the day after. Um, so yeah, there's, I know there's more witnesses out there that I was not able to find. Wow. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's interesting that some pe I, some people don't want to talk about it. I mean, I understand when someone doesn't want to be on camera, but that leads me to wonder if perhaps they had a negative experience through this whole thing. 
Well, we talked about uh, when you guys were talking about religion. So, yeah, Ariel was a Christian school, but there were quite a few Shona um, who have their own religion and uh, um, like animism. Um, and their interpretation, uh, you know, they believe that it was their ancestors or, you know, there, there were different interpretations at the school. But one of the one of the uh, witnesses that I we agreed to have an interview, and uh, we spoke on the phone, and I went to interview him. This was in South Africa, and I got to the interview site, and he he said, you know, look, I don't I don't want to do it. And I said, well, wow. we talked about it, and I and I said, I asked him, I said, well, what what what's why why is it that you know you know we set up this time and what's what's the reason you don't want to go into it? I mean, I was open to accepting it. And he said, well, I feel like that it had something to do with the devil. Ah. And I was like, and well, it was interesting. And I said, okay, um, I don't think that's, you know, I, I told him my personal opinion, but I, I walked away from that thinking, you know what? Something pretty big deal happened there. If even if, it, you know, to even bring up the fact that, it was something religious that impactful said a lot too i really right. wish i could have interviewed him i wish he wasn't uh so religious about it and in 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 deciding you know he was afraid he was obviously afraid of what happened there um so religion did have a, an impact and it had an impact on these kids as a whole because the a lot of the, the the moms and dads were very Christian, and it was very hard to, uh, in in at that time, to be open to the possibility of this fitting into their worldview. You know? Right, I get that, uh, Randy. While I have you on right now, and you probably can guess one of the number one questions that I'm being asked in the chat room, and that is, when will the film be out? <laughs> yeah, it has been a it has been a really difficult. Uh, process to uh, to uh, make a film like this and make it uh, as good as this and get the right people to work on it and that's been the goal so we're, we're at a, a really good place we're probably going to be close to a final in December but again I don't a lot of people I don't think understand how difficult it is to make a film of this size um, it's you know I'm dealing with 600 hours of footage tons of archival footage and, uh, um, you know, the next step is I'm working, going to be starting working with a composer, and then we have to go color correction. I mean, we're looking at uh, February, March at a release, but I'll, that, again, okay. depends on distributor. You know, we have a lot of, but it's definitely going to happen uh, um, before the end of spring in 2018. That I do know. And, you know, uh, this is sort of the final sprint to the finish line. <laughs> After yeah. all this time and all this research and all this uh, retrieving of footage and interviews, so uh, yeah, I'm very excited to yeah be able to I, to see the light at the end of the tunnel and get this out to the world for sure. Well, I know you have a very high standard, and um, you do a really uh, an amazing job. And your photography, by the way, is just incredible. Ah, uh, thank you, so, sir. Yeah, so I understand that you're not just trying to get something out. You're trying to make it a piece that's going to be timeless. I could have got, I could have done this. I could have got this movie out in two years. And then though, then I started getting more information, finding more people. I'm like, you know, this story, I'm only going to get one chance to tell this story. And, uh, and I want to do it right because the story deserves it. There's so many people in this story, the reporters, the uh, the witnesses involved, the you know Salma, so many others. Um, uh, the other, you know, there's just a lot of people that, and it, I I like to do. Anybody that knows me like knows that I I I like to do things right, even if it takes forever. Yeah. And um, I I want to be proud of what what I've done as far as a piece of work when I'm done, and I want it to uh, uh, be something for the witnesses so they can have. For themselves and to, to yeah to be timeless in the fact that okay uh this is the definitive uh coverage of this event you know for for historical purposes too like you said 
And I was glad to see that Dan Aykroyd stepped up and helped you out with a little promotional. That yeah, Dan, nice. fantastic. Yeah, Dan Aykroyd was uh, just a really good, he's a really big hearted man. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I had interviewed him because he was one of the last people to interview Dr. John Mack uh, from Harvard. Really? Um, yeah. So, because Dan was planning on doing a, like a, a, a paranormal uh, talk show and it never launched. So, but I found out he had the interview and I got the interview from him and, um, and he agreed to, I asked him, what, would you be okay with me interviewing him? And he, you know, donated his time and um, yeah, I've been getting a lot of uh, great help from a lot of people like that. Um, but we're still doing an Indiegogo. <laughs> we're yeah. still we're still raising funds. It's it's been a it's expensive. Boy, I, I tell you, you, you get in post production. Yeah, we we had a private conversation uh, a while back, and you were telling me about editing, oh. and uh, how costly that is. Very. Oh my god. And and so consuming. Yeah. Um, all right, Salma, back to you. Uh, a question I have is, um, you said at the time you had you didn't have any fear. Um, now, do you think like, if you saw something again, someone asked in the chat room if you ever had another, any type of encounter. I don't know if you have or have not, but um, do you think you'd have fear this time or do you think you'd, it'd be the same way if you had to guess? I think if I had to guess, if I had the experience again or another experience, um, I, would, I would definitely be more intrigued than I was at 11. Um, I, I, again, I, I don't believe, I didn't feel afraid. I just wasn't sure of what I was seeing and what I was experiencing, um, at 11. So I think this time around, if it were to happen again, I would, I would definitely be less inhibited. Really? Wow. I think that's... Because, because I, because I think I have more of an understanding of what my experience was. I don't know if, if people have multiple experiences like that. I have no idea. Um, I've often wondered about it. Sometimes I'd be like, well, can't you just come back again so we can, <laughs> we can have that chat, you know, like let's finish that chat. Um, to be honest, I, I have thought that from time to time, but I also, I also know that if, if it will, if it's meant to be, it will. Now you said uh, you were so incredibly close to this thing. Um, and what was it about three feet tall? That's what a lot of people mentioned. Yeah. Yes, you... three to four feet tall, I guess. I was taller than it was. Uh -huh. And I was, I was, I was, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm tall, but I was also a very tall sixth grader. So that was very, just a little alarming, I, you know, because I was like, what am I looking at here? <laughs> Yeah. You know, what, what am I looking at here? Um, so, well, I know yes, how it, kids, was about, it was about that height. Uh -huh. I know how kids are and how they like to touch anything. I'm surprised no one tried to touch the being or the craft. You, you know, there's something about those tree trunks as a boundary, Martin. I'm telling you, oh. it, you mm -hmm. people, people, we took that very seriously. Nobody, nobody <laughs> crossed that boundary um, at all, whether it was your arm or your foot or your toe. I also think that because a lot of us were unsure of what we were looking at, we just knew that we were looking at something unique and different, you're also less likely to, you know, reach out. I certainly was. Curiosity was not going to try and kill my cat that day. I was not reaching out and trying to be like, you know, what is this? Um, but I can only speak for myself. I think just the, the general feeling and sense on the playground that probably makes sense is that okay we know we're looking at something we don't know what it is so we're just gonna observe from afar which i think incidentally is what they did as well because none of them came into the playground not a single one wow. at least none that i saw and I, I, I none of the people that i am still in contact with when we talk about it remember the beings being in the actual boundary of the playground mm -hmm. wow Wow, that is that is really something. Um, I'm opening this up if someone wants to uh, join us in Google Hangouts. All you have to do is, uh, if you're listening live, all you have to do is just type in your Gmail address into the chat room, and I can I can join you. Um, 
so uh, back to you about the um, uh, in your exploration, um, Randy, of uh, doing this film. Uh, did anyone try to find trace evidence? Yes. At the site. Yes. Um, that was uh, four four days later. Um, that was through Mufon, Cynthia Hind, and a technician uh, who had a Geiger counter, and uh, they actually did soil samples. Uh, it was pretty, it, you know, considering the technology, you know, in Zimbabwe at the time, it was they used what they could. Um, uh, it was a, a couple other instruments that they used, but they didn't detect anything abnormal in that area. Um, mm. So, I mean, that that was interesting you know something you brought up earlier i know you know the kids had said uh the, the whole hair without hair incident uh yeah you know uh, yeah. description of this being well i was wondering that was a big one for me it was like in the beginning it was like all right wait a second and you know what that's unusual for one in the research that i did and then i came upon an interview with a a couple of the kids from an archival section that i uh retrieved out of Africa and um, where the where one girl in particular she says yeah one had hair one had what looked like hair that was standing near the the object and the other one which came and approached the playground didn't have any hair um, and I was right. like oh okay so there that it kind of that 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 one in particular said okay I get it so it wasn't just they weren't identical you know there was definitely right. more than one um, so anyway, I just wanted to raise that cause it, I, it was a big question for me. Um, cause there was a discrepancy in different reports. Like some said that it had a hair like thing. Uh, John Mack that had asked, uh, the children a lot about that. Like, well, was it actually hair or was it some kind of hood or whatever? Um, but there were, from what I've been able to discover that there were two very distinct creatures. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I'm glad you. I'm glad you uh, did that. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you um, said that. Um, Salma. Um, yes. Going all the way back to the description of the being, you know, because I, um, you're probably going to be the only one I've ever talked to that actually <laughs> saw a being like that so close. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, you know, and I, I shouldn't say that because a lot of people are saying they're, you know, experiencers and see things, but. Um, say sure. you were surrounded by witnesses. Um, when I talked to Travis Walton, you know, he told me the eyes were the most, you know, incredible thing. The eyes were the scariest yes. thing of them all. Do you feel the same way? Were the eyes I like big and black? Like, yes, yes. Um, and I can see my the picture that I drew vividly um, in my mind. The eyes were very, very captivating. Um, nothing like I'd ever seen before and um, incredibly magnetic, which is, it, it almost felt like it took effort for me to break that gaze, which again, you kind of feel if time is slowing down, if that is in fact what happened, I don't know. Um, but they were very big and uh, very dark and very, very, <laughs> just, they were captivating. You know, it was one of those where you, you couldn't look away. Now, what but, is, you didn't, but you didn't really know what you were looking at, so. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the children drew a picture where they had pupils. Uh, are you familiar with that picture? Did you see, like, white pupils in the middle? I, I'm, I'm familiar with that picture. So, so he drew. He, uh, he was asked what that was, and he said that there it was the reflection of light that he was uh, trying to draw. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got it. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. All yeah. right. So we only we have about uh, five or six minutes left, and um, I want to make sure uh, this is such a great opportunity <laughs> that I get to ask you all the questions. But I, I, I think I'm going to ask you. Um, um, what you could tell someone out there who's maybe experienced this that doesn't want to talk about it or suppressing it or or would never want to report it. Do you feel as though you could help them through something like that? I mean, I, I think that 
I would definitely encourage the person to talk about it if they wanted to. I think it also takes the right person to break that in. You have to feel, I, think, I almost feel that if, if it hadn't have been Randall, I may not be having this conversation with you. Sure. So the approach that the person that you're trying to have this breakthrough conversation with is really, really important. Um, I also think that it's important to recognize that your experience is as important as you make it. And if you want something to be spoken about, if you, if you want to have better understanding, perhaps talking about it in some way, shape or form is a good idea. I would never begin to suggest what that is because everybody deals with things differently. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not a psychologist at all, so I, I don't pretend to have this fantastic understanding of the human brain. But I do know that with experiences come processes, right? We, we all process things very differently. My, my goal would be to not discredit this person's experience, but to also have them think, whether it's first in journaling or in um, making little sound bites about what their experience is to help them understand what that could mean and that may eventually help them talk about it because i don't think that it's just a i don't think it's a fluid thing it most certainly was not for me i i can only speak for myself but like i said sometimes those those years of suppression or the time of suppression is actually beneficial to you to realize that you're still thinking about this this thing really did still happen you're still you still have yeah. dreams about it you have other dreams about it you have all these other things that have happened in your life that, okay, this is not going away. What can I do about it? What am I supposed to do about it? And I really do think oh. that it's a transitional thing. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like all, all processing what you're talking about. Um, did you happen to keep the drawing or drawings that you did? Um, I did not. Randall, do you have it? I know we have a picture I believe of it I do. Yes. somewhere. Yes, I, do. Yeah. Um, I do not have it. We, 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 let go of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I just wanted I think, to I think Reddit probably has it. <laughs> I, I do. Okay. Um, I, I, I've got them all. So I just wanted to say, to kind of add to what Salma's saying is that, yeah, I mean, we do, people do uh, keep, uh, keep things quiet. And uh, when, when they really do need to talk about it and they, when you keep something quiet and inside for too long, it, it, it manifests in other ways that are not so good uh, in addictions, other kind of things. So I think yes. it is really mm -hmm. good to, if, if there is somebody out there that, that needs to speak about it, that they speak about it with the right person um, right. and know who to trust and uh, take it slow because some of these times, I've, I've run into this with several of the other kids, it's really, that we're really traumatized by this. And uh, it's, it's something that you have to really take slow, but it's, you know, um, it's part of the culture that we're not be able to speak about it, and that's what needs to change. Well, excellent. All right, so uh, you know we're at the. I wonder, if, I wonder if I could do a split screen here with both of you on. We are at the uh, the end of our show, and uh, so I guess uh, I really really enjoyed it tonight. And I want to ask you uh, in the show notes. I want to say in the show notes there are some drawings. There's some pictures. And uh, you can find that on podcastufo.com. Um, so all that's there. And also, there's uh, I think there's a link to the FundMe page you have, as well as yeah. the Ariel. Aerialphenomenog.com, and they were doing an Indiegogo. I got to tell you, we, we did this Indiegogo. We started it to raise funding, funds for the finishing funds. And then we got hit by hurricane, 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 oh, shooting. Yeah. I mean, we couldn't have picked a worse time to do an Indiegogo <laughs> campaign. But yeah, right. if, if people are, are really want to help, uh, we need it. Yeah. Um, so thanks. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Randy. Don't say goodbye yet. So I'm going to say goodbye yeah. to you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you made it to the show. Jeez, it was. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, for a while there. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. And I got to tell you, you're one of my favorite guests. This was really great. This oh, thank really you great. very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Yes, and I hope your future is as bright as I think it's going to be. Thank you. I hope so too. I think I think um, I think it will be. Yes. All right. You take care. Well, thank you. Have a good uh, night. Bye bye. Right.
Bye bye. And thanks for joining me in the studio. Thank you. And I'll, I'll also like to nominate Selma for guest of the year. Okay. Great job. I'll take that. <laughs> All right. All right. Good night, everyone.